across now to Strasbourg. Uh, Dragos uh, Tudorake, one of two members of the European Parliament, leading negotiations with the European Commission and member states, all 27 of them, on an AI act to regulate artificial intelligence. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. You're very welcome. Good evening. Before we ask you about uh, how your bill is progressing ahead of a December 6th deadline, I believe, uh, first off, your reaction to what you've just heard and what you make of the sacking of Sam Altman and the turmoil at OpenAI. Well, I'm also not very keen in speculating over um, a lot of things that we actually don't know as to what was behind the decision of the board uh, to sack uh, Sam Altman. I agree that OpenAI is a very important company in the global ecosystem of artificial intelligence. We've all been watching over the last nine, ten months uh, the evolution of ChatGPT. In fact, to a large extent, we owe the uh, fact that everyone now speaks of artificial intelligence. We owe, we owe it to ChatGPT because that is what brought everyone's attention to uh, the transformation that AI was, was doing to our economies, our lives and our societies. Um, but again, we can only speculate as to what were the reasons. What I think is a takeaway, uh, at least for us as Europeans now trying to make sense of the kind of rules that we want to put in place for artificial intelligence, and in particular for these kind of models like ChatGPT, um, is that we need an oversight, we need safeguards for these models because of the impact they have, because of the versatility that they have and the fact that we're going to soon find them in a lot of the products and services that are around us. So I think it is something that speaks volumes as to the need for increased responsibility, increased accountability around how uh, these models are being developed, the ecosystems in which they live, in which they, they grow, uh, and also uh, safeguards related to how they are rolled uh, on the market. Yeah, and f uh, we have uh, news on that front in the last 24 hours. France, Germany and Italy reaching an agreement on how AI should be regulated, penning a joint paper uh, to make sure the legislation does not hamper Europe's own development of what's called foundation models. That's to say uh, artificial intelligence infrastructure that underpins uh, large language models like OpenAI's ChatGPT, like Google's BARD. Uh, the paper suggests self-regulating foundation models through company pledges and codes of conduct. Self-regulating foundation models. Are you in favor of that? Well, let's be very clear. This was not the position and is not the position of the European Parliament. In fact, as an institution, we were the first ones that recognized the need to bring in a regime of, of obligations, of, of uh, rules for foundation models. We did so in the mandate that we voted back in June with a very large majority, I underline. The Council on their side, they had not, in their common position last year, they had not introduced uh, anything on foundation models. So we started from these very different positions in negotiation. I saw, of course, together with my colleagues in the negotiating team in Parliament, we saw the paper from the three governments. We are negotiating with the presidency, the rotating presidency of the council. These are the rules. It is up to the council to come uh, before us. Because the their argument is, the their argument is, represents the council. Right. Their argument is that, uh, well, the, the, the Americans are first out of the block uh, with companies like ChatGPT. They control a lion's share of the market. We're going to regulate and keep ourselves small while they continue to grow. Nothing in this regulation, in fact, I always say that this regulation is, is, is as much as pro-business as it is uh, trying to protect the values and the rights of our citizens and society. So there is nothing in the regulation, even in the one that we had uh, and in the position that we had uh, outlined as parliament up to now, that prevents the growth of companies. Uh, I think rules related to transparency, rules related to accountability, and again, the responsibility and the transparency that you owe to citizens, uh, to the ones to whom you address your products, is a bare minimum uh, that I think uh, companies working and developing artificial intelligence owe to us as consumers, to society, so we don't see these rules as putting uh, hindrance or, or burdens on companies developing artificial intelligence. Uh, and we have been in Parliament actually paying quite a lot of attention in balancing out the rules that we want to put in place to provide the safeguards to citizens uh, in the use of artificial intelligence with rules that are helping to promote innovation, to create at European level the ecosystem necessary 
for us to also uh, grow these models of our own and also be competitive on a global stage. Um, Dragos, we still if I may. Think that uh, there is a balance to be found here. Yes, please. Yes, uh, if I may. This push by these three countries, I mean, it risks torpedoing the act entirely, doesn't it? I wouldn't say that. Uh, it is a position that, of course, has to be taken into account. Uh, again, we are not negotiating with France, Germany, and Italy. We are negotiating with the Spanish presidency, who represents the whole council. It is up to them to come and bring us a position that represents the council. Uh, it is not uncommon in these sort of very uh, political, very sensitive negotiations to have positions outlined by one government or several set of governments that ultimately it is the common position of council that matters. We are negotiating with the council represented by the presidency, so we are very much looking forward to see what would be the views of the presidency, what would be their position in the negotiations to come in the next two weeks before the next trilogue. And then we will see how we accommodate the views on their side, on our side, so that we reach a compromise. We are committed on the 6th of December to find uh, agreement. Uh, we hope that the Council comes to the table as committed as we are to find an agreement. And of course, in a negotiation, everyone has to give a little and take a little. And we are approaching this negotiation in a spirit of finding uh, agreement, finding a, a, a landing zone. And if everyone plays into these negotiations the same way, I'm convinced that we can find a solution. Is there a chance you could miss that December 6th deadline that you've imposed for yourselves? Well, again, I would not speculate on, on the outcome of the 6th of December. Uh, I'll repeat what I said. Uh, we, on the Parliament side, are committed to, to, to come on the 6th of December uh, to close. Uh, I hope the Council will do the same. And then we will see at the end of the day and night, because most likely it's going to take uh, the whole day and the whole night to negotiate. We'll see whether we will be close to an agreement or maybe we will have an agreement. If not, again, it is not also the end of the world. We still have time until the end of the year, which is what we said would be the the uh, goal for us, the target, to close by the end of the year. Uh, so uh, we will approach constructively the 6th of December and see what that gives. Uh, Chargos, uh, let me ask you, uh, the, um, have you been in coordin coordinating with uh, the United States, with Britain, who've also been talking up the prospect of regulation, or will it just be the European Union? Listen, we've been talking to uh, the U.S. and many other jurisdictions around the world for the last three and four years. We've had here in Parliament a special committee on artificial intelligence, which I had the honor of chairing. And throughout the work of that committee, already prior to legislation, we had been in contact constantly, not only with policymakers in the U.S. and other jurisdictions, but also with representatives of governments who were all considering at the time what path to take. Should they go down the path of, of creating hard rules, like the, the ones we're considering in Europe, whether they should have a more light touch, so on and so forth. The conversation has been much more focused this year, after ChatGPT, with all the emerging discussions about uh, risks, about existential threats, many discussions that we in the European Union had had already. Um, and that helped actually galvanize more of the international community around the need to, to bring forward some, some safeguards, some safety rules, particularly for the what are now called the frontier models. And now we saw the uh, results in the Hiroshima process. The G7 has come forward with a code of conduct. We saw the outcome of the, uh, of the summit in, in London. So I think all this speaks for the need of convergence at a global stage. The fact of the matter is that we in Union, if we get this negotiation done, will be the first jurisdiction in the world that will not have only principles, so only voluntary commitments, will actually have hard law. Uh, and that is no, uh, is no easy uh, or, or... If there isn't a hard uh, law, and very, of course, very once briefly, we have that... Very briefly, if there isn't a hard law, uh, how worried should we be? Well, what we have seen over the last couple of months, what I mentioned earlier, the G7 or the discussion in London, very much focused on the, what were called the existential threats or the bigger risks of these frontier models. But let's not forget that artificial intelligence also poses everyday risks. When you go to a bank, when you go to an insurance company, when you send your kids to school or to a hospital, we are already interacting in the day-to-day -day life with artificial intelligence that is open to bias sometimes, that is open to discrimination. So there are also these risks that need to be mitigated, and this is what our legislation is about. So I think the absence of an AI Act adopted as soon as possible will uh, leave in our societies um, an, an, an open... Uh, field for potential discrimination and also for our societies also is not trusting enough the technology to interact with it. And I think that's the, that's the duty that we have as policymakers to remain 
committed to deliver this legislation for the Union. Dragos Tudorakia, I want to thank you so much for joining us from Strasbourg Live. You're very welcome.